Okay, so let's set up the next scenario. We have our physical host that's going to experience the catastrophic power failure. We have Dell Power Edge server number three, which is going to be used to manage this environment during the failure. There are two guest machines that are running. These guest machines are sharing a guest file share cluster. The guest file share cluster is running on guest node two. Guest node two is running on Power Edge server number four. This again is the one that's going to go down. So when it goes down, this is going to go down, and this is going to go down. The thing that you want to make sure is you want to make sure that you have high availability elements turned on. Inside a guest cluster, these elements are turned on for you automatically. There's a basic resource health check interval that happens, and this is set up to ensure that the clusters are constantly pinging the clustered resource, and should it fail the, the, the ping timeouts, then it will automatically start the service up on one of the remaining nodes. In Hyper-V, this is not turned on by default. You'll notice that if I bring up the properties of the guest cluster node 2 here on the left hand side, this allows me to set the preference for which node I would like to have this thing set up on. It also has a tab here that it says enable persistent mode. In the event of the, the environment being brought down, this will say, okay, well, uh, I will try to attempt to come back on the node that I was last running on. And there's various reasons for that. The other option here is to say that I want to auto start. It's very important that you know the difference between right clicking on the left hand side, which is the properties of the actual clustered application, versus the properties of the clustered virtual machine. When I do it on this side, we have a whole bunch of new tabs here, including this tab that's under the settings that it says enable heartbeat monitoring. <coughs> enable heartbeat monitoring allows Hyper-V to start probing the operating system of the VM to see whether or not it's still responsive or if it's had some kind of issue. If it has an issue, it considers that VM to have had a catastrophic failure and it will automatically restart up that VM on one of the other remaining Hyper-V nodes. That again is off by default. So you want to make sure you're clicking in the right place and we'll bring up the properties of the second node and ensure that it actually has the heartbeat setting enabled as well. Okay, so now time to set up our client requirements. Here's our host client that we're going to have. It has some drive letters that are mapped out, our P drive and our T drive. Our P drive is some ISOs that we're going to copy over to our T drive, which is the guest clustered resource. This is a constant ping that we're going to have to test connectivity of that clustered resource. These are the two drive letters with my ISO store repository and I'm going to start doing a file copy. So we've got 16 gigs of data here. I'm also going to bring up my task manager which will show us in real time what our LAN adapter is doing. Okay, so all the elements are set up. We are going to kill server 4 which will kill node 2 which will stop my file copy over here and what we're going to anticipate is this file share is actually going to move over to node 1 based on guest clustering, high availability. Second part here is node two is gonna start up on physical node three because of Hyper-V high availability. So in order to actually do the catastrophic power failure, I've got my iDRAC already preloaded up. I'm gonna flip this thing over to the power management tab. And right now my current status is powered on. We're gonna shut this guy off by powering him off. And then immediately we're gonna go back to the client and see what happens here. I can see some file connectivity has been dropped off here. And this right now, uh, the guest cluster is completely offline. Guest node one is trying to figure out what has happened to the application service. It waits approximately about five seconds there before it decides that that node is physically down and has taken control of the guest file share cluster. My copy right here is gonna to have to time out because this is like the worst case scenario that we can have here and this is to be expected. However, let's go look and see what's happening inside my failover cluster manager. So node one, uh, well, let's look at the guest cluster first. As I click on this, it's gonna take a little bit of time and then it's gonna figure out that this has actually been moved over to my guest cluster node one. 
and we'll give it a little kick by telling it to actually forcibly refresh. And here we go. It's automatically moved over to guest cluster node one. I can see that there's been a, a couple of different critical events and I've been playing around with this before the demo here. So the last one that we have here is at 532 and it says cluster node one guest cluster node two was removed from the active cluster file membership. So this is how it's detected that we had the failure. Let's go and see what the status is from a Hyper-V perspective. So our node two, which was cranked off on node four, this has actually been automatically reset up. And again, it's detected that it's had a critical failure here. And our timestamp identifies this was at 532. 532. And it says cluster node one server four was removed from the active failover membership. Uh, the cluster service in this may, node may have stopped. So therefore I have to move it over to node three and automatically start it up. Uh, and it also tells me, hey, you might want to run some validation because that was just no way in the, the way of uh, normal for that environment. So if I look at this, I can see, yeah, indeed, Hyper-V's got control of both nodes. My client, on the other hand, he can still ping. And actually, if you look at this, it actually was able to resume that file copy without actually popping up an error message to the end client. So this is just what I wanted to show you guys today from a, a guest and high availability guest clustering with a combination of high availability Hyper-V clustering. Some of the cool things that we get from a high availability perspective. Thank you very much and talk to you later.